Hi, my name's Christy Paxson, and well, this is the Christy Paxson Show. Okay, so a lot of people want to know, hey, what's the show about? Okay, well, it's basically, we got some comedy sketches going on, some exposés, some, you know, in-depth interviews with fans, and today's focus, a lot of it's going to be the Kirkwood scene, which is my personal fave, and I think basically anyone that has any degree of coolness would agree. Okay, right now we're in People's Park, right there. You can see the beautiful marquee donated by Parks and Rec, the city of Bloomington, thank you very much. Okay, and we picked People's Park because it's, after all, it's for the people. And you know, this show is for the people. You know, we like that people thing. You know, we're people people. Okay, so you can see the pan of the park. Basically, people come out here to study, read, hang out, pass out, you know, whatever happens. It's kind of an anything goes kind of place. If you're poor, senseless, and you're looking for action, come on, tune in to Christy Paxson, the Christy Paxson Show. The Christy Paxson Show. Action back, action from Christy Paxson, back in action. If you ever a caution of the Christy Paxson Show. The Christy Paxson Show. If you're sitting around, just kind of relaxing, come on and get yourself some of that Paxson action on the Christy Paxson Show. The Christy Paxson Show. Here comes Christy. Christy Paxson Show. Christy Paxson Show. Life's a drive. 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 Okay, we're in People's Park, and we found two people, oddly enough, right here in People's Park. Okay, now this is Kara, right? Kara, what's your last name? Hogel. Hogel, and Carol, Kara Hogel is from? Bloomington. All right, another one, and you are? Jennifer. And Jennifer is from Bloomington, right? Yes. All right, Jennifer. Okay, now we're at People's Park, you know, and we're just checking out the scene, looking at people, things like that. Now, what are you doing here, okay? What are you doing right now? Well, we're walking through. <laughs> okay, walking through. What's your destination? Uh, the grass, actually. Yeah. The grass. That's a good place. So you've come here to relax or to get hyper, to read what? To cool off, relax, not study. Probably chit-chat a little bit. Yeah. Uh, chit-chatting. That's one of my favorite topics, chit-chat. I mean, there is no topic. You can do anything. I think it's a good exercise, too. Everyone should chit-chat. What are you doing out here? Just interviewing people, obviously. Interviewing people, finding out their impressions of Kirkwood. See, I think Kirkwood's probably the coolest area in Bloomington. I think you would have to agree, right? Yeah, yeah there's not much else, yeah. <laughs> in addition to not being much else, right. So we just thought we'd ask to see why Why would you choose... Woo! God, I want to go out with that guy. Anybody with a loud engine. Yes! Okay. For one, you know, it's a pickup point for me. But, uh... What about, um, you know, what's the main reason you come down here? Well, it's sort of like a central area. I mean, you have to, like, you can come down and, like, get something to eat or get something to drink. Well, and also I live over there, so I have to walk through. <laughs> to get well, that's off. good. That's good. So do you guys, you go to IU? Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing part of your day with us. <laughs> I'd like to show you is 
our vegetable, Chris. It's green. And when I think of green, I think of vegetables, right? I mean, who wouldn't? So, it's green. Easy reminder. And look, it's got a lid. Fits perfectly. to do some further investigation on this new creative concept invented in the 90s known as telemarketing. I know you didn't think marketing could come up with anything more creative than that classic line, you want more fries with that, or new and improved tartar control. Well, let me tell you, telemarketers are here and they're here to stay. Now, telemarketers work from the hours of 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., so beware. Don't answer your phone during that period. Okay, a little review. Telemarketers are here to annoy, not here to spread joy. Let's see what our first telemarketer has to do. Her name is Sandy. Hi, I'm Sandy. How are you? That's good. Have you heard of the Christy Paxton show? You haven't? Oh, well, you should really watch it anyway. It's on BCAT. That's channel three to you and me. I know you'd like to make a pledge. No? Well, how about a bumper sticker? A flag? How about your own exclusive line of credit with the Christy Paxson Visa card? That's okay. We'll just check back with you again tomorrow. Oh, she's going to call tomorrow. She'll call the next day and the next day. I just, I can feel it. Let's see what our next telemarketer has to do. Hello? Is your mommy home? She isn't. Well, is her purse home? Okay, good. Now reach in and get mommy's plastic card and read me the numbers. Yes, the number that looks like a circle is a zero. Okay, now bye, and remember, don't tell anybody I called, and you'll get your very own genuine Christy Paxson Show oven mitt. Thanks. Our third and final telemarketer. Hi, my name's Priscilla. You know, just like Priscilla Presley, yeah. I think Elvis is alive, don't you? Well, anyway, I'm calling in behalf of the Christy Paxson Show. Hello? Y'all, where'd you go? People are so rude, so rude. There you go, telemarketers. Hey, hi, we're right down here on Kirkwood and um, we've got one of, the, one of the many things that goes on in Bloomington. There's a lot of political activity, which I like, political science major, and I think it's great. And um, we have someone here representing the Lenora B. Filani campaign and we're just gonna ask her some questions about that. What's your name? April Butcher. April Butcher. All right. Way to go, April. Okay, so uh, are you having much success getting people to sign petitions, donate, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, what we've done is we just started the drive to get her on the ballot here. It's going to take 50,000 signatures to get her on the ballot here in Indiana. So we've started that drive, and we're raising money right now to get her in the debates in the general elections so that she can ask Bush and Clinton the tough questions. You know, like, we, they've been in office for decades. Why don't we already have a national health care service? You know, where do these guys stand on PAC money controlling policy in this country, and what are they going to do to get rid of them? Stuff like that. So we're raising money for that campaign, and it's going real well. It's going All real right. well. Bloomington is, you know, a Fulani city for sure. Yeah, great, great. And I see you've got uh, one of the uh, campaign uh, things here is America's, you know, too big for two parties. That's great. That's great. We're getting some, you know, get some alternative things going on here and we gotta always speak out and you gotta vote everything alright well thanks a lot for sharing your time and sure. good luck okay thanks. all right 
Hi, we're here at the Von Lee Theater, probably the coolest theater in town besides, you know, Bear's Place for the Ryder films. But um, as you can see, we've got the Basic Instinct uh, poster here. And I just, I just want to ask Sharon Stone a few things, you know. Hey, Sharon, do you want me or Michael Douglas? <laughs> anyway, okay. I was watching Saturday Night Live uh, last weekend. I don't know if you saw it, but Sharon Stone, man, they had her in the skits doing the Oh, the tackiest, you know, sex scenes. Every skit, it got really old and sort of like our show. But anyway, um, yeah, this is the Von Lee. Come here, see a movie. If you can't afford it, do the old, you know, matinee thing. That's what we like to do. Okay. Tartar. It's an ugly word. Well, I used to have a problem with tartar, but not anymore. Now I found tartar control paste. And let me tell you, it's done wonders. I mean, job interviews, people, they just can't help but Right off. We're doing the old test of the mic, so test of the mic. Although none of you are named Mike. Is that true? Checky, checky. That means yes in band world. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool being backstage. I hope I don't pee. Well, for those of us in a band, we usually check the microphone. Check. One, two. One, two, three, four. Check. Is this thing on? Hey, you sound man fucker. Or something to that effect. Wow, cool. In, in Germany, it'd be Czech like, Czech like, Eins, zwei, drei, vier. Czech like, Czech like, Eins, zwei, drei, vier. So not only is this show cool, it's educational. Could you do more of that German stuff? Uh, no, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, this is a little bit more on the personal side. Jim, is it true that Bill has to take a bowel movement every time before a show? Uh, okay, I don't really want to get into this because it's kind of embarrassing to Bill, but basically... <laughs> Um, I've been playing with Bill for four or five years now, and Bill's really good. He's really fantastic. Uh -huh. he, I mean, I, he's my meal ticket. I mean, he writes the songs that make me make me sing. Does he write the songs that make you cry? I don't know. I'm not prone to crying very often. But anyway, but yeah, Bill, for some reason, part of his nervousness, I'm nervous too, is his, uh, he has to shit a lot. What about you, Bill? What do you have to say about this? Is this just a lie, just like to get the fans excited, you know? No, it's true. Every time before we play, I have to go to the bathroom about 15, 1,600 times. I think it's normal. Actually, you know what's nice about Jake's, though? One of the nice things about Jake is they have our own a band, a bathroom for the band, a private bathroom. I think we should take a look at it. Okay, on, let's do it. The band toilet. The band commode. There's no actual lid, but you, have the option. you do have the option of, you know, either sitting or standing, given your choice. And you have toilet paper. Sitting or standing, ooh. The band bathroom trash can. Now that's clean. The band bathroom coat rack up here, you getting that? And this, myself, this is what really sells it for me, is liquid soap in the band room. Let's get a close up on this, liquid soap. Now watch this, you push it, and liquid soap comes out. Ooh, look at this formation. When, I, when you see that circle, what does it remind you of, or, or what shape is it? It kind of looks like the Taco Bell I stole from Carmel one year. Uh, I think that's a sign of sickness. I'd like to thank everybody for sticking around. Thank Lee for the show. Thank Megan and Stephanie. Thank Antenna and Schrodinger's cat. Thanks to everybody. Tip okay, uh, waiters and waiters. We're, we're kind of... Hey, Bill. We're kind of kind of mixing this as we go, so uh, you can have some help from the audience telling us what's too loud, not loud enough, that sort of thing. We'd all very appreciate it very much. Is it important to have a clean bar? Oh, yeah. Very important, I guess. Okay. Uh. All right, so this is Roger. He's a bartender at Jake's, and we're just going to ask him, you know, any crazy customers, how the sales going, you know, stuff like that. Sales are great. Tips are way down. Not going to pay the rent like this. 
Oh uh, man, tips should be good for you, you know? You look you look like a nice guy. Yeah, I am. When people tip. Oh wait, hold on. All right, all right. He's got a customer and he stopped talking to us to serve the customer. I think he deserves a good tip for that. I mean, he's serious about his job. What do you think, Pat? Oh, he's my favorite bartender in town. He's, he's, he's congenial yet, yet authoritarian in his managing of the bar. And he's, he's a, a powerhouse of, of alcohol dispensary. All right, a powerhouse. I like that in a bartender myself. He makes my drinks really stiff. All right. And we all like stiff drinks, stiff anything, frankly, if you know what I'm saying. This is Leo Cook. Leo Cook and I go way back. We had this like camp thing going together a long time. Prehistoric. Time. Prehistoric. So were you playing pool tonight or just hustling or what? Uh, trying to hustle but still losing at pool. Ah, uh, well, you know, what can you say? So you looking forward to Brown Betty, or did you come here for any other reason, or what? I think the uh, question is, are you ready for Brown Betty? Because I know I'm ready. Woo, he rhymes as well as plays pool. Yeah, was that a question? Uh, I think that was more a statement. Oh, okay. You're an English major. I forgot. This is going to be really tense for me. I was a political science major. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. So any thoughts on tonight? What about the rain, anything? I think the rain's going to bring out the, the side of Bill Cameron, the lover side, the romantic side, and I think he's going to be able to, you'll be hear that tonight when uh, the guitar virtuoso of Mr. William Cameron. Ooh, you yeah. Know, my grandma used to make a really good apple brown Betty. You want my grandma's apple brown Betty? I've never had your grandma's apple brown Betty. Maybe you could bring a slice down to the station, you know, we could share I it. I could always bring a hunk down. I'd love to bring a hunk down for all the listeners out there. And a hunk down. Is a that hunk. a new down? Yeah, the hunk down. Hey, da, 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 da. Oh, that's that's Hank down or Hunker. Uh, uh, no, that's. Ho down, ho down, ho down, ho down. No, oh. that's isn't that the new thing for Waffle House? Hunker down. Oh, Hunker, yeah. Yeah. Slab or slice a chunk of. A hanker for a hunk of cheese. Oh, I get a hanker and I get a flavor for the fever of the Pringles. Rip into the Ripplins. Good one. I think they should Hi, use Mom. that. Hey. Sure. What are we interviewing about? Well, we're just talking about, you know, Brown Betty, that's the upcoming band, and the rain. What do you think about the rain? Oh, well, I've never heard them. Are we talking about the rain outside? I'm talking about the, the freak side of nature, no, the rain. Uh, I see a little heat lightning out there, Chris. What do you think the heat? I mean, is there a lot of heat in here? Are you feeling any heat? It's a lot of heat in here. A lot, a lot of, heat. of heat in here. It's a lot of body heat in here. What do you think about body heat in general? Is it a good thing, body heat? I think it's a real good thing, but it's a kind of a dangerous thing, too. That's true. That's true. I mean, if you're on a first date with some, you know, somebody, body heat might be, you know, kind of embarrassing, but, you know. Yeah. You you can never tell if it's just going to make you perspire and maybe get a little aroused or something. Ooh, aroused. That's a good word for tonight. I think that should be the word of the night, aroused. What do you think? I like the word aroused. Arousal, I think that's a great word. So do I. Yeah. I think it looks good on you. It suits you, arousal. Should I get like a little gold necklace that says arousal on it? Oh, my God. Or an ID bracelet like in sixth grade. Yeah, yeah. Well, the music tonight is kind of 70s, and I think it would be really appropriate for the style of the music. That's true. And maybe you could give it to one of your favorite ladies tonight? Yeah, I think that that's an excellent, excellent idea. All right, all right. Well, thanks, Chris. A any other impressions of the night you'd like to uh, share with us? It's a lot of fun. If you're not here, you're missing out on all the body heat. All right. <laughs>
punch the seat, Brown Betty. They rock my world. They should rock yours. They just. All right. Thanks. Yeah. They, hey, they rocked mine. I know. I mean, you can see my hair's all messed up. But uh, all right, Megan's yours too. She should go home and hot roller it, right? Exactly. Crimp it. Crimp it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We've got fashion and music from Megan. Megan, thank you. Thank you. Bill from Brown Betty, and we're through babbling. Now, here's the meat. You have the potatoes. Here's the meat. Uh, we got together about we got together about in February, so we've only been together for about three months, and we're already we're burning them down. The barn is burning, baby. Uh, we play guitar, bass, drums, music, and it's pretty much fast and hard and heavy. And we want to play songs that you'll hum on the way home. And you won't be able to get them out of your head for weeks and weeks afterward until you finally go insane and buy 50 copies of our album. And uh, I write all the songs, and I'm the creative element of the band. Okay, here's the real. Here's how Primate actually got started. True, true story. I uh, I tried out for Steve Qualtier, like I just said, but then I quit. Then I felt weird about it. I decided I wanted to do it again, but they'd already signed on with Brent and Bill. Bill. I'm good at the show. Anyway, so Bill comes out to me at Baby Culture Shock last year, and I was pretty bummed out because I couldn't play Steve Qualtier. He's like, don't worry, Jim, you're mine. So Bill and I dicked around for like six months, never playing. I was talking about how we are going to play, but we were going to. Pat Spurgeon said he'd jam with us sometime, but he dissed us one day, and then phone rings, and it's Tom saying, well, I'll play drums with you. And I'm like, okay. 
Didn't know he could play drums. Tom comes over and sets us on fire. Um, spent a long time coming up with names, but pretty soon we had Brown Betty, and that was it. Okay. Can we go somewhere? Can you come with me? Come here. Come here, sir. So as, as he was saying, see, see, Pat, they really wanted Pat. They didn't even want me. They didn't want me. They didn't have any, any want for me at all in the band. So, so Pat, they called. I was like Pat's little brother. They called, and, uh, and are we not allowed to go in here? Or? We, we can probably come. Come on. But uh, I'll just get changed. So then they call, and, and, and I answered. You know, Pat wasn't there, like a little brother kind of thing. And uh, so then I, um, I'm just going to get changed so I can get coke. And um, then I ended up going over. I probably thought that they, they couldn't write songs. I mean, really, I mean, people come to you all the time when you're in a band. They say, hey, you know, I want to jam with you sometime. We just shag them off. We don't really listen to them or anything. So, uh, so then, but, but apparently, you know, so I showed up, and we started jamming. Apparently, these guys can really write songs, which is, which is great. We were really excited. And, uh, so, so it was great, and, and uh, we worked out, and then we started playing. We really didn't even think people would like us. We, you know, we rocked really hard, but you know, people don't like good music all that much. So, so then apparently then we did play. People did love us, and here we are. <laughs> and and these, are my, these are my children, my little my caffeine buddies right here. So that's, that's about it. I think that's probably the history right there. As far as the influences of the band, we all like Elvis Costello and The Who. And then uh, there's other stuff we like, too. Jim and I like Public Enemy a lot. Tom. And Tom likes Public Enemy. We all like Public Enemy, The Who, and XTC. XTC, The Jam, but we don't sound like any of those bands. I'd say we kind of sound like Old Replacements meets The Minutemen. In a dark alley with Prince. In a dark alley with Prince. No, what I want us to sound like, being as I'm the creative element of the band, did I mention that? I write all the songs, and I want it to sound like if Elvis Costello sang for the Minutemen and wrote all their songs, kind of, sometimes. So that's pretty much what we're all about. All right, this is the early May now that you're seeing this. And the two shows we have right now are the ninth at Second Story with Joyride and, uh, and, and uh, Trailside Killer. No, no, they're not Trail. Walking Ruins. Shank them. Shank them. Anyway. Anyway. And we're also doing the 21st and the 22nd of May at the patio in Indianapolis with a band called the New Duncan Imperials. They're really hot. You should check them out. Um, we're hoping to get a recording out sometime. Uh, we're starting our, our, our t tour of Antarctica um, next February because, you know, we wouldn't want to do it. It's, that's w summer down there. February is summer down there. So we're going to go to Antarctica and do that. Yeah. Okay. But it's all a lie. He's lying. Completely lying. Um, what we want to do is get a record deal, make records, have everybody buy them, be really popular, never really have to tour, but just play all the time for our friends and make tons of money through selling albums and CDs and videos and t-shirts and stuff. Um, and not have any corporate sponsorship or anything, but still be really rich and ha have the best band in the world and everyone will love us. Um, I think that's pretty. Uh, he already said XTC and uh, you know the Jam and the Who and everything are our influences. So and and that's all true. It's very true. But um, that you know and people get confused because I played guitar with Steve Kowalski and everything. And, and it's true I play guitar and everything. But but drums was my first instrument, my first love. I'm, I mean I'm a more natural drummer. I basically just know the bar chords and Steve Kowalski and everything. And we needed a guitar player, so that's why I ended up being the guitar player because. I'm a loud mouth. I mean, I talk a lot, as you probably figured out. So, so that's why, you know, front men, you need to talk a lot because a lot of front men, you know, they'll play in between a song, they don't say anything. It's boring. It's boring, really. You need some cohesion. Hi, we're outside the home right now of Nancy Labner. Now, in case you don't know, Nancy Labner dates Bill Cameron, and he's in the band Brown Betty. Okay, now we're trying to do this segment on what it's like, you know, to date Bill Cameron, only the biggest star in Bloomington. Well, she's been avoiding our phone calls. I've written her everything. So we're right now outside the home of Nancy Labner. So we're going to get her this time, I promise. Oh, here she comes. Nancy, Nancy, can I, no. can I ask? No. My brother is 14. He's got everything. He's got a TV, VCR, refrigerator, computer, everything. You won't believe it. Many nights, we're trying to sleep, the whole family. And then you hear this like electronic nee, 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 or whatever's going on. There's light illuminating from underneath the door. There's this electronic buzz going through all of our heads constantly. Now, I just want 
you to see exactly what he's got. Now he isn't home, so we're free to look around. First of all, the computer. I mean, look, he's got a rotating clown head at all times, whatever he wants. I can't believe it, rotating clown head. Oh, okay. Printer, the whole ball of wax, video games, you name it. Over here, he's got a fish tank with an Oscar, nice fish, you know. You know, I had a fish tank, I had some goldfish, you know, whatever, the standard. Oh, he's got the tank, the filter, the whole ball of wax. I, ugh. Okay, this is my favorite. The CD player, the VCR, the TV, everything. <sighs> the ultimate, the refrigerator. How he talked anyone into a refrigerator, I'll never know. He claims he'll need it for the dorm. The dorm's about five years away, people. Okay. Check out the goods on the inside. Full of caffeine goodies. You got your Pepsi, you got your Mountain Dew, and Sprite. Hmm. Yeah, I've had a, too much caffeine. I think I'm gonna go for some uh, Sprite. What are you doing in my room? That's 50 cents. Give it. Hey, man, I just wanted a sip. Mom pays for these. You don't even I pay don't care. Still, it's my stuff. Joe, Shh. I'm not gonna pay. I'm not taking from you. Oh, I am. Just play your video game. Try. Man, kids today, they don't have any sort of. I actually had an imagination, you know, I used to put a blanket over, you know, the dining room table. That was my house, you know. What's this electro oh my <laughs> Hello? Hey, let me put you on the speaker for a minute. Yeah, hello? Hey, what's up, Joe? Nothing much. What are you doing? Just playing some video game. I can't get any privacy around here. I'll just have to call you back later, okay? Oh. Well, okay. Bye. Bye. Some people, God. Oh, uh, speakerphone? Hi, we're at the new Ben and Jerry's now. You can see uh, Ben and Jerry's has changed this alley totally. This used to be basically uh, graffiti central. Now it's kind of turned into a pasture land, which is, you know, okay, but I prefer the graffiti. Okay, someone's coming down the alley here. Hey, we're standing right now in one of the many fine VW vans we have in this great city. Some of them are, you know, a various variety. You've got your dead VW van, you've got your white VW van, which anytime you hear white van, it kind of makes me think it's undercover, so I, I kind of stay away from the white ones. But here's a lovely chartreuse flavored one. I think it's great. I think this town needs more VW vans. If you have them, converge on the city and we'll have a big caravan. Maybe we can have sort of like Smokey and the Bandit goes to Bloomington. In the VW van, it could have a new hippie twist. I love it. I was someone who just noticed us noticing the VW van, and she told us to see this movie Slacker. And now why is this? Well, because it's a good movie, and it also has one, one VW bus that's highlighted in the movie and one that's part of the background. All right, so that's a total of two, two VW buses. All right, now you were saying something about you were, tell me about your friend and the van. Well, I have a friend who has a VW bus, which is a coincidence because my family had a VW bus when I was growing up, and since there's seven kids, I always had to ride all the way, like, back with the wheel. Uh, and so I just noticed them, and so now when I see one, I notice it, and I was attacked by several VW buses the other night, um, wow. and they were following me around. Wow, that's great. Now, you're on a bike right, right now. And it's not a VW, but it's no, a it's twin, which is sort of the equivalent. Exactly. Now, this city's a real bike city. I mean, of course, we've got that little 500 thing, but in addition to that, we've got the mountain bike thing, and, and t it's, tell me how much easier it is on a bike than a car in this city. Well, it's a lot easier for me because I can't drive, and cars are very difficult for me that way because I don't know how to work them. Um, so a bike seems to be pretty simple, pedals, brakes, uh, wheels, and, uh, and so, you know, if you want to go anywhere, really, then you have to have a friend with a car, so I tend to make friends with people with cars a lot, but but for me, it's much easier on a bike. Well, that's great, making friends with cars. Yeah, that's great. All right. I actually make friends with people with cars, though, not with the cars themselves. Ah, uh, well, that's a good distinction, important distinction. I'm glad we cleared that up, you know. Okay. Now, your net last name, I know your first name's Mary, but Riley. your last? Riley. Riley, like the children's hospital. Yes, actually, just like that. All right. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. So, Paul, what's your philosophy of life? 
I don't know. You kind of look like the thinker right now in that pose. Really? I'm too young to have any answers at this point. Just be open. That's good. That's good advice. Be open. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open. For what? Well, anyway, we can talk about that on the next show. Paul is my ex-roommate's boyfriend, so I kind of spy on him, make sure he's not, you know, doing the wild thing, you know. How do you feel about that, Paul? What, sex? Or yeah. just, I like it a lot. I hunger for it, and sometimes my mouth salivates when I think about it a lot. Ooh, all right. What about with, yeah, with my ex-roommate, Lori Jones? She's noisy and fun. Ooh, all right. Too is that a winning combination in a gal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she's free-spirited and independent and violent at times. That's fun, too. All right. So what a, you've been here for four years. So no, I've only been here for two years. Uh, two years, okay. But you're still a senior, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So what are your, like, impressions of Kirkwood? You like Kirkwood, you know? I mean, this is the cool place, right? Um, yeah, it's fun to come down here and... and and just watch the people, the the high school cruising crowd with the 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 cars that they've spent all their money on, and then the the large speakers, the um, the professors walking around in the days, the the hippies, the the guys that work in restaurants. The yeah, there's people. a lot. The the just the everyday people. It's fun. I like it. Yeah, I like to stay here on a Friday and like judge the best cruising high school car you know I like that like the low riders you know they should really get a life but I don't know I guess they can't get into bars yet <sighs> all right well thanks Paul thanks for your impressions of Kirkwood and and you work at the red chair bakery right mm-hmm I do you're the dough maker am I correct I'm the dough man it's it's a very involved process I had to take some training last summer in um, Minnesota, they sent me to school there, and uh, I learned a lot. It was a good experience. It was kind of an intensive camp where we had a lot of, a lot of uh, difficult physical things that we had to get through. But um, it was worth it, and I'm glad I'm here. Paul, I think that's a lie. My ex-boyfriend worked there as the dough maker. He got no training. And Terry doesn't need training. Terry is, um, he has a higher consciousness than most of us. He just, he's already there. He's at that level. I see, yeah. What happened with that? Let's talk about that for a while. Oh. Hi, we're standing right now in front of the Runcible Spoon, which basically is a coffee house, you know, fun, you know, lunch, snack, dinner type breakfast place. You know, really great place. Sit down, talk to, with your friends, you know. Well, recently they passed a no smoking policy that not only includes the inside, but the outside as well, which some tend to think is sort of a fascist type, you know, policy, which, you know, hey, I, I tend to agree. Anyway, um, there's something weird about this place. You go in and you don't know whether you should, you know, order at the counter, sit and wait. They just look at you like you're an idiot. Everyone around here is talking about poetry and then you just feel totally out of place if you just want to, you know, a little muffin and to, you know, read a comic book. So anyway, we recommend this place if you're a little on the pretentious side and you know you know how to deal with um oh thank you i've talked to millions of people all over this great land and they only have one thing to say and that's that they all hated those episodes when tommy sang on cbs's alex hi we're at cafe pizzeria now cafe pizzeria holds a special place for christy paxson Okay, and let me just tell you what that's all about. Okay, my parents met here 20 years ago, okay? They, they, they met at IU, fell in love, never moved away. Okay, and one of the places they would go is Cafe Pizzeria. And since we always go there, birthday, um, I, you know, I remember, I remember getting straight A's on my report card and getting treated to a pizza. Of course, that was a long time ago, the straight A days. But, um... Anyway, they're always friendly in here. You can get whatever you want. They've got banana peppers to get on your pizza, which personally I love. And um, basically, you know, it says since 1953, and that's right, since 1953. I was born in 68. It's 92 now. I hope the Cafe Pizzeria will always be here. Hello, now we're at Grant Street. Now, Grant Street has some great furniture. They have some old furniture that they refurbish, you know, antique style, and they also get some new things. Look at this. 
this a great chair? I think I'll just sit here all day. How you doing? Yeah. Any, yeah, Grant Street, it's great. Now, something new they've got. They've got these new shoes. You can sort of see them over there in the distance. Now, these shoes are like Birkenstocks, only they're not. They're Israeli shoes, and actually, I think they're better than Birkenstocks because they have some little foam padding underneath. And they're about cheaper than Birks, so, you know, you might want to consider that next time you're out shopping. You need that comfortable shoe. You know what they say, comfortable shoes, greatest thing in the world. You can walk around, do anything in a comfortable shoe. Right now, we're standing in front of Nick's English Hut, and this is a great hubbub for the alumni, basically. Um, you know, the, the undergrad goes there occasionally, but basically, this is a place to go if you're over 40 and have a drinking problem. Now, a word from Mrs. Beasley to our viewers. Speak! <laughs> this is a prayer I hated from childhood, and you'll see why. Now I lay me down to sleep. If I die before I wake, Dad, am I going to die before I wake? I don't know. You might. Oh. Hey, we're back at People's Park, and this pretty much concludes our show this time. And right now, I'm going to check out this uh, magnanimous kiosk here that's got many, many activities to do in here in Bloomington. So what I'm going to do now is uh, check it out, see what we want to do next time for the show. So, see you then. folks, what'd I say? They're annoying. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, count for five. Start. Hi, we're here to do some further investigation on this new creative marketing concept known as telemarketing. Okay, telemarketing, I don't know if you're... Oh, forget it. I saw him. Okay. Count to five and begin. Okay. There couldn't be anything more creative in this marketing field. Terry, you're laughing. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I'm getting nervous. How come the first one? Okay. Five and go. Hi, we're here to do some further investigation on this new creative marketing term known as telemarketing. I know you didn't think that marketing could come up with anything more creative than the line, the classic line, if you will. You want more fries than that, Jerry? You gotta stop laughing. No, man. I'm squinting. Okay. All right. All right. I won't flub up. Okay. Count to five and go? Yep. Okay. I won't look. Focus on the lose any of the, the, the precious nectar. Oh, my God. The nectar. Oh, my God. Heaven forbid. Finally, people in Bloomington know, like, when I go to a restaurant, they just start bringing me Cokes immediately. I just went to Hoover, and, and, I, and I just sat down, and the guy the guy just started bringing me pictures of Coke. He didn't even ask. He was just like, this is Chauvert. He's going to need Cokes. Let's start fueling the man. He said it was an honor to have, have me there. Really? Yeah. I get treated well in this town, I'll have to admit. Lately. I didn't always. Ass all over the place. <laughs> well, we will. I don't know if I can do it. 